This is the At Games Blast. This is the At Games Blast. This is the Bandai Namco edition that has Pac-Man, Pac-Mania, and then a few others that we'll take a look at here. And it's kind of come under a bit of controversy. Now, what am I talking about when I say controversy? Well, AT Games or At Games, however you want to say it, sent these out for review. John Hancock actually did a review on it, and it looked all right. I mean, it actually had like arcade versions of the game, and they ran pretty well, and actually for the most part, at least the performance looked pretty good. However, people started buying these at Walmart, where I got this one, to check it out and possibly do follow-up reviews or just reviews for their channel, like Mad Little Pixel, and he figured out that, wait a minute, those aren't the same games that I saw in John Hancock's video. And yeah, wouldn't you know it, they have NES games on this version, or NES ROMs, and they have arcade ROMs on the one that John Hancock got for review. So the reviewers got better versions of the game, recommended it, people went out and bought it, and that's not what's on this one. Specifically, like the, this is like the Walmart one, that it has Pac-Mania. And you might be wondering, what is the, the issue with that? Well... <laughs> I, I played it, and uh, the performance isn't very good. Here's some video I captured of Pac-Man and then Pac-Mania. We'll start with Pac-Man. I noticed uh, some odd slowdown at times, screen tearing all over the place, specifically in Pac-Mania. I do think the Pac-Man, just the regular Pac-Man game, is playable. It, it has noticeable performance issues, but I think you can at least play it. Pac-Mania, like if you're playing that, uh, you, the screen tearing is just super noticeable when you're playing it on your screen and you're looking at it. It's noticeable in Pac-Man as well, but it's Pac-Mania is very bad. It's 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 unplayable almost with some of the screen tearing, and it makes me wonder why. So we're gonna go ahead and unbox this today. We're gonna check out, uh, I guess, inside of, of of the system itself, the little stick that we'll go over and see what's going on in there as well, because I thought it'd be interesting to take a look and see what they packed into this thing. Oh, and just for fun, I also recorded. Uh, the NES Pac-Man game that was on the NES Classic, and I did notice a difference when it came to screen tearing, stuttering and stuff. The NES Classic version plays a lot better. Uh, just when you're playing it, it, it's very noticeable when you're actually playing it uh, in person with the controller and everything. So, uh, heads up there, this is just not a very good version of any of these games. So let's get this uh, guy apart. It unboxes pretty easily, it's just on the bottom. I, you know, I do kind of like the the look of, of this box. It, it actually does stand out pretty well. They got the Pac-Man character right there on the front, so it's very easy to see, and uh, it kind of sticks out and grabs your attention when you're walking by. They do have a uh, package on the bottom. They also have age 15 plus, which is kind of funny. I don't really know why. When you look at the game list, it's not really, uh, actually, let me flip it over for the game list. It's not really anything that would stick out to me that would need to be 15 plus 4. I don't really know why that's the case. But here are all of the games at the bottom here. Dig Dug, Galaga, Galaxian, Mappy, Pac-Man, Pac-Mania. Pac-Mania appears to be exclusive to the Walmart version. Sky Kid and Xevious. So everything there is what you would expect from them putting it into a Bandai Namco flashback. So unboxing it we get a black and white manual slash poster. I guess they want to kind of put it in the form of a, a poster and everything. And you can see the controller. It's shaped like a six button Genesis controller, which, all right, I guess. I mean, you don't really even, I don't even think you need all those buttons anyway. I'm trying to think of what game would really uh, take advantage of all of those buttons. And I really can't think of anything on here that needs all of those buttons. So I don't know. Uh, and it has a controller that does take AAA batteries. Let's actually jump in. Oh, it has stickers too. Check that out. You get like ghost stickers. Sweet. <laughs> and then here's our controller. It is, it, you know, I will give them credit for the plastics they used here because it is a, a, a bit sturdier plastic wise. It does have a start menu, rewind, and then the buttons are like this bright, like orange color. Uh, the D-pad's a rolling D-pad, but I think it sticks up a little too high and it feels like it's gonna pop off. I, I will admit that. It does feel like it's gonna pop off. Um, I think that's just because the height is it's just so high. Uh, the rewind feature was all right. I think it rewinded like 10 seconds or more. Triple A's go there and then we have an on off switch at the top. It, it just turns the controller on and off. It doesn't have any effect on the stick right here. You have to unplug that if you're done. Or if you have it plugged in, I guess, to the USB port on your TV, it'll turn off with your TV and then turn on automatically with your TV. So if you have a TV that gets kind of grabbed by an HDMI input and is and is um and goes to that one automatically, I guess it'll automatically turn on to that whenever you power it on. So 
keep that in mind as well. Uh, but the controller is very light. The buttons feel cheap. The actual plastics here actually feel pretty solid, to be honest. They don't like it doesn't like bend or anything. Um, so that at least is fairly solid, more so than a lot of like the Hyperkin controllers and stuff that I'll check out. So this, not bad. Now, let's talk about this blast stick. You also get a, you also get a USB cord that's not very long. It's, I think it's like three feet long, not even, maybe less than that. Uh, so it's not very long there, but you can use any. And then of course you can plug it into power brick. I just plugged it into a cell phone brick that I had and it worked fine. So the blast stick, this is the main system right here. And it usually blast on the front. On the back, they actually did a pretty cool job having that, like the at games kind of like logo etched in there. I actually like that, uh, that effect on the bottom. It's pretty cool. And you have a cap, HDMI, and that's, that's about it. That's your, this is your system right here. So it, it's not actively cooled or anything. It's all passive and there's no obvious screws anywhere. So we're going to have to crack this guy open like completely, um, which is fine. I don't, I thought I had more spudgers. I don't. All my spudgers are broken, so I ordered some more, but we'll just crack it open with a, with a flathead screwdriver. I'm not too worried about this. This isn't like the most expensive thing in the world. Um, it's about 20 bucks, so. So I'm a bit curious if we can identify the chips, if they're using anything specific with this, uh, or if it's gonna be like, like if you get like a, a cheap Chinese tablet, like the China tablets you can get on eBay, they don't, the chips aren't easy to identify. They're pretty difficult to do so. Okay, so yeah, this just has a bunch of clips. It, this came right off. Uh, and that'll actually clip right back together too. I think it's really broken, so hey, that went well. <laughs> All right, so what do we have here? Well, it's one single board. Very straightforward there. Um, let's see what we can identify here while we're looking, uh, looking over it. Uh, let's see, so we have, uh, what chip is this? We have the, the Monkey King 3B. That is actually a very familiar sounding chipset you know i'll actually look that one up pretty quickly and then we also have the esmt on the bottom and then we have our mxic as well which is more than likely our flash storage so let's uh let's check out these chips okay so here's what we have with this uh that's just i this chipset i knew i recognized the the monkey king 3b uh they used the monkey king 3.6 chipset in that uh sega that flashback that I checked out before we took apart, remember there's the Mo a Monkey King chip in there? It appears, maybe they rebranded it for this one, but it appears that it's, what it is, it's a rebranded uh, rock chip, and it's actually a 3036 from them, and that's a dual core A7, and then it has a Mali 400 GPU, so it's nothing fancy. In fact, it's, uh, it's a pretty basic chipset, but what's weird is this chipset shouldn't have a problem playing these NES ROMs, that's what's kind of throwing me off here. So more than likely it's the emulator that they're using. Now they also, they don't have a ton of, there's not like a lot of RAM in this, although you don't need a lot of RAM to play these games. It's using 128 megabytes of SD RAM, clocked fairly low. There, there's a range you can clock it, but more than likely this is clocked at about 200 to 233 megahertz. And then it has a flash storage chip that seems to hold about eight megabytes. <laughs> Again though, you don't really need a lot to, for NES. For NES ROMs don't take up much, and there's what, like eight games on here? That's not even two megabytes. You'd be lucky if that's what it was. It's probably, it's probably, they might have been able to fit all of these, to be honest, under a megabyte, depending on if they have it uh, in a certain way. But this is not a very expensive thing to produce. The chipset in this that's rebranded to a Monkey King can be found in like the, uh, their tiny little Android boxes you can get on eBay for like 10 to 15 bucks. That's what this chip generally resides in. It's also in those cheaper tablets, like the cheaper, um, uh, they're really bad. Like, like they're out of China. I usually buy them out of China on eBay and they're like $19 for the tablet with a screen half the time and they run terribly. That has this kind of chip in there. So the thing about that is though, if their emulator is good, these chips should not have a problem playing these games. And we saw that with the arcade version that John Hancock had. So more than likely what's happening with this version uh, of it. The emulator they have on here is, is poor and it's not playing the ROMs correctly. And that's why their screen tearing slow down and just overall poor performance and just a poor experience. So with the emulator that's on here, the hardware is capable. The emulator that comes with this thing uh, does not make it worth the $20 at all because you could just buy one of those Android boxes, to be honest, and load your own ROMs. I mean, it would work fine. So for 20 bucks, you could get a better experience and you'd be able to do more with it. So no, the AT, uh, AT the at games, I would say AT, the at games flashback blast. 
is a waste of twenty dollars. But let me know what you guys think down below. I'm very curious. Hopefully, this gave you a little insight to what's happening here. It does come with a controller, so I guess that's something. Although the controller is hit or miss anyway, considering you get a USB controller and use it for one of those boxes as well, and you'd be able to pick your emulator, and their emulators out there run much better. But let me know what you guys think about. This down below, I'm very curious. Make sure you guys like the video if you liked it and dislike it if not, and I'll see you guys in the next video.